So, uh, welcome to the Lacuna Festivals. We are here with Lady Gabby for today's um, live workshop event, Snip and Paste. And I'm super excited. Are you excited yeah, to get started? Yeah, looking forward to it. Okay, uh, Gabby, over to you. Hi there. Um, yeah, my name is Lady Gabby. I am a collage artist, um, a photographer as well as a performance artist uh, based in Berlin from Australia. Uh, Romania, Australia. Uh, now I live here since years and I have been earning my living uh, giving creative workshops, especially creative collages to kids um, and teenagers and I love collage making is I find it a really a uh, great way of uh, meditating because you're just kind of always, um, you know, kind of focused on one thing, but it's like, um, and you're looking for images to that stick to you and then putting it together. It's a really interesting way of making art and just kind of giving old, like recycling as well. That's one thing that I do with creative, uh, with collage making. Um, I take this to recycle festivals where we work with old things, so old magazines, and so just throwing them out, we can make art. Um, I make collages pretty much out of anything, like, you know, it's like if I see plants or, you know, petals or bags or anything, or, you know, even food. <laughs> so, yeah, I just like assembling things and giving the things new, new meanings and new aesthetics. Um, and since the um, festival theme is distance, um, I just thought maybe we could together um, have a look at um, images that kind of speak about distance to you. So I don't know what, what I guess distance meaning physical distance. And since the lockdown Corona, we've all been stuck to in front of our computers and um, you know, we've been cutting down the distance between collaborations via zoom and via facebook and social media and um but there is other type of distance that we could interpret um i don't know can you think of an example what distance means to you guys there's something that just immediately so the first two magazines that we've um got in our pile we have time and right. this, and this is the front cover okay um, and then we have Cosmopolitan, and this is the front cover. All right, nice. Okay. Uh, and so the first thing that's come to my mind is um, is the distance that I still feel between my lived experience and the lived experience of some of my friends and colleagues, um, and how I can't I can't bridge that. I can't kind of quite reach somehow. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know how to. And I get, I get quite upset actually about some of the experiences that they have to deal with that yeah. I don't, you know, because of my privilege, because I'm kind of white and cisgender and all of this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and the only thing that I have to relate to is my kind of, my, my, my gender, I guess, and the fact that I've been discriminated against quite a lot because I'm, um, female and I look a lot younger than I actually am and professionally right. this has been quite difficult um, okay. and that's the only kind of relationship the only kind of similarity sorry um, but when I see these people in magazines and I just think yeah they just feel so far from me you know how do right. we bring our kind of collective experience together yeah. somehow so kind of like emotional distance somehow as yeah. well uh there's physical emotional uh distance um or there is no distance whereas like you know even though we are actually talking right now and doing stuff um there's there's physical distance but then there is no social distance because we are kind of talking so distance can be interpreted in, in many ways um you know and it can be expressed through you know postcards or uh emails or you know sending photos to each other or sending you know whatever like chain mails or um yeah so there's 
plenty, you know, or distance, like also traveling. That's another thing that, you know, and now it's summer, a lot of people like the lockdown's been eased up. So a lot of people are traveling. Um, so, you know, we could look for travel images um, that we could make, um, you know, in our collage, like a postcard, um, like an imaginary place that you would like to travel to, you know, yeah. if you could actually, if you didn't have any restrictions or the place that you've been to maybe um, and you would like to go back to or, um, you know, I'm sure everyone's got like a favorite spot where they would like to go, but they can't go because of certain, you know, that region might be, you know, re uh, like um, how we say here in Germany, risiko gebiet, risk area to go to because you might you know come back sick or whatever um yeah that could be also something that we could look for like in the collage when we cut out images for collages um like you know i also have id magazine it's actually pretty old so it's kind of like gonna be really weird it's like 2000 i think <laughs> ah great so um, it's almost hard to cut it up and got kate moss on the cover you know um, and there she is again, looking really cool. It's going to be hard to cut her all up, you know, uh, but you know, I might find some really good images here that could be, um, that could be, you know, could symbolize, um, distance and, you know, um, so places far away or, I don't know, sorry? Is distance for you more, more of a physical thing? Sorry? Is it more of a physical thing for you? Uh, the distance? Oh, it's, it's, it's a lot. I mean, um, I, you know, I make my living, um, you know, traveling to festivals and performing and whatnot. And, um, yeah, so it's been that physical thing and also, um, you know, not having the kind of spaces to go and, you know, um, perform also in Berlin. I mean, I have been, I've been lucky. I shouldn't complain. I have been performing and I have actually like, you know, continued doing my thing, but going somewhere else. I mean, I love, this is one of the reasons why I left Australia and I came to Berlin because Berlin is in the center of Europe and as a performer, it's great. You can go to any festivals, you can join, you know, everywhere. And th having that actually gone, that's so it's been a little bit weird, you know, constantly finding new ideas, new ways to express yourself or, you know, ways of keeping sane. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been physical, it's been emotional, it's been um, everything, you know. I mean, I've, you know, I mean, I've, we've been quite lucky in Germany. I mean, you know, we are quite privileged here as well. Um, we've had, you know, um, support financially towards artists um, as well. So um, as I said, I'm not complaining, but at the same time, you know, um, I can complain. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> There's things I can always complain about, like sexism, homophobia, racism, that I have seen this increasing, and also distance between people, you know, this whole idea that I was sort of been tackling with relevance, you know, another way we can make a collage, like looking at people like, are you, you know, we've been kind of putting these categories, like, are you relevant? or not during the pandemic, who's relevant, who isn't. So, you know, as artists, um, I guess, and teachers also, I do, I work with kids in schools, you know, the first thing that got cut was artists work and also working with so many children on site, not just via Zoom. Um, so, you know, um, yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's left a big hole, you know, in, in, in everything. And um, so, yeah, so we could look at, um, yeah, so this is the relevance, you know, like, you know, have I made the wrong career choice, you know, becoming an artist, doing this. And I know I haven't because I know what the satisfaction it gives me doing work. But, you know, um, they're the first people whose jobs were kind of like on standby, just like still are, you know, not everything's open. Yeah. So relevance, back. you know, that could be also a, a thing that we could look into, maybe make a collage of how do you feel relevant? What is your relevance? You know, 
that what, what is your do you feel relevant these days or what what you know what makes you relevant how do you see yourself i don't know um this kind of stuff you know so i found actually a really interesting image uh i'm just gonna cut it out and just show you i found three that are kind of very different but also kind of very um linked so i have <laughs> I have this submarine type scuba affair. Right. Okay. And then I have these scientists in a lab. Yeah. And then I have this this astronaut. And they're all, all right. kind of perfect. That's they're all really kind of far, but they're all kind of exploring, aren't they? But in different ways. Yeah, but also, you know, their jobs is about distance. Yeah. Like with the astronauts, you know. Um. When you do your cutting, do you, so for example, would you just cut out the whole square of that image so that you can... Uh, well, it's up to you. I mean, there's no rules. I mean, you know, what strikes you the most? Like, I got this now. Like, I cut this out of the magazine. It's a glass with uh, fake teeth or false teeth in them. And so it's like, you know, distance you know well, your teeth are somewhere else rather than you know <laughs> i like that <laughs> me too <laughs> what are you finding because your magazines are quite different to mine i'm just rummaging at the moment just rummaging yeah okay yeah these i've also you are right all of these are females so female diver female scientist female right hey. We are empowering the female. The females. Uh, yeah, it was just funny because we had this incident uh, last week here in, in Germany, in Berlin. A, fem a woman was lying down sunbaking, um, you know, topless in a park. And, uh, you know, some, I don't know, but she got like a, a we have this Ordnungsam, these the people who go around, it's, they're not cops, they're just kind of making sure that you don't destroy public property and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, she got told to put her top back on, you know, and she said, no, why should I? It's summer, I'm in a park, you know, I'm here with my kid. It's just, I'm just topless, you know, not doing anything. And uh, there's all these men around who have their shirts off, you know, what's happening. And they hassled her. They actually, she refused to put her top on. And then they said, oh, we'll call the police or whatnot, you know. And um, she ended up, you know, almost getting arrested because she just refused to put her top on, even though these uh, males, everyone around was like topless or not. Well, you know, uh, men, men, topless men, you know, she was pointing and said, well, I'll put my top on when these guys do the same. Yeah. And uh, she ended up getting almost arrested. And it was just, you know, then she organized this demo, which happened last weekend called Free the Nipple. Yay. where people on their bikes, you know, and um, went around Berlin, you know, topless men and women. So everyone, you know. Yeah. So that was really nice to see also so many, you know, men supporting, speaking of. Free the nipple. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that needs to go in. Yeah, just as I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cutting out all of my... I'm already starting to think about how they could go together. Okay. When you're putting things together, I'm really interested to speak to a kind of full-time collage artist because I yeah. use, I'm mixed media, so I use collage quite a bit. Okay. I don't know that I feel particularly skilled in it. So um, how do you kind of start? How do you decide where to put stuff and well, whether it's working or not? I just basically just collect the images that strike me and then I kind of like, it's like a puzzle, you know, I just kind of put them together and see what, if this has got a message or not. I mean, I don't want the collages just to be pretty, you know, of course I do some of these pretty collages too, but most of my collages, I really want to make a statement like uh, political, social, anti something or rather. Um, yeah. And um, so I, it's just basically like, you know, 
thinking, what well, does this make sense? Is this strong? Does this come across as a political or some statement of some kind? Um, yeah, is it just pretty or is it surreal? Is it data like, um, you know, because I like abstract surreal stuff as well. And or is it very just beautiful? It's just aesthetic, you know, mm -hmm. as well. So much to think about. Yeah, so it's just like, as I said, I mean, it, for me, it all starts with the images. And um, I'm part of this collectives uh, online on Instagram. They've ba basically been also celebrating collage art um, during the m m month of May. And, um, you know, every day there was new challenges, you know, and um, there was one company from Arizona, I think it's called Collage Arizona or something like that. And they send you images already, you know, they send to all the, if you want, you can, you know, write them, you give them your address and they send to you in envelopes images already, you know, and then you have to work with those, the images they've sent you and make new collages and post them and hashtag them. That's really cool. So yeah. that was, yeah, that was really nice. You know, that was a one way of, you know, also beating distance and, you know, still being in touch internationally with artists. That could be a really nice collaboration project between yeah. artists. I mean, a bit like yours. I mean, yours is about that too. Like, you know, people collaborating together from, you know, who don't even know each other or whatnot. And yeah. yeah. You, you've been doing this project a long time, you guys? This is the third year. Okay. Um, so we've only actually had one year where it's been physical, which was 2019, the first year. Okay. Um, and then we had, we had three galleries, we had about eight event spaces, um, and we had about 20 artists visiting from all over the world. Um, so it was a really great start and there was quite a lot of energy and then obviously COVID came. <laughs> so yeah. last year, 2020, it was 100% virtual. And okay. here, it ended up blended. Um, it's still a lot more virtual and digital. But um, yeah. about three or four weeks before the, the launch of the festival, right. one of our physical exhibition centres got in touch and said, well, we can still go ahead. And we were like, oh, wow. Like everyone else has told us that, we can't and yes. so we hadn't asked for any work we hadn't planned any time to kind of curate or to have an open yeah. or anything so it kind of went a little bit crazy didn't it then yeah it was um, a little bit hectic trying to get things organized yeah because we had all of the virtual stuff that we'd already committed to as well um so this year it's kind of mainly virtual but we have one exhibition space right and we've had a couple of physical events we did, I, I did some life drawing, focusing on distance, which was really cool. Okay. In, a, in an art space, a new art space actually on the island. And um, what else? Oh, and we have the paste piece from Ant Antidote, which has just arrived. That's gonna go up somewhere. So that'll be like a physical installation that people can visit. Right. That, everything else is, is digital this year. Yeah. So next year, I don't know. I think we're going to ask people because I think a lot of people like having a, a virtual element so they can kind of engage, even if they can't think so. Here. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I mean, you know, it's like it's really nice to also use the internet and everything like to create something, not just to consume and not just to look for videos or whatnot. It's also nice to actually. Um, this is one thing I've, I've noticed or I've realized during the corona. There's been so many online performance festivals and also could ask us to perform online like through Zoom or Facebook or whatnot. And it's actually been a great thing because then all of a sudden you can reach people who are not in the same city as you or whatever. So you can reach people all over. And also you find new ways of responding to performing to a virtual audience, you know, um, it's definitely a different experience than performing face to face with the audience. So it just also made turn me into what well, made me kind of, um, you know, look, adapt, you know, and find ways to perform and, and, and respond. And I actually really liked it. You know, it's like, 
a nice, like I did a poetry event once that uh, somebody invited me from America. So it was like in the middle of the night here for us, you know, and I was in my bed doing my spoken word. It was like, wow, this is really, you know, how do I say this decadent somehow? Um, yeah, I found this other image. It's like a, a traffic light, you know, walking. Yeah, it's like distance. he's walking across that. Is it a billboard or a shop sign in the background? Uh, it's a billboard. Yeah, it's like a cinema. I it think. looks like he could be about to stroll across it. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, I found this as well. Also, like a walking. I like that bit of perspective. Distance and then no distance. Yeah. <laughs> that's great you know so yeah so i've got about five images that i've collected so far i'm gonna look for a bit more and then i'll just like kind of you know um yeah i've got all these images of men on catwalks since it's a fashion <laughs> magazine it's interesting that you've got lots of pictures of men i like that yeah, I don't know. This is, yeah, this ID magazine. It's, um, so far, there's loads of guys. But, hey, I've got one girl now. And a goat. And a goat. Very important. Yeah. I, I'm cutting it out, and I'll show you. <laughs> I've now, after a strong start with all of my females in um, their own bubbles, but exploring, I've now come to a bit of a standstill. I'm not really finding anything. I might have to change magazine. Simon, you've got a huge pile. Can you... Can oh, you share? No, no, I mean your images that you cut out. Oh, okay, yes, well, give me one second. Hmm. So this is the image that I found. Nice. That's fantastic. Yeah. Love yoga and goats. Yeah. <laughs> Again, like, yeah, no distance. Okay, so now I've found something. Let's take you. So this is kind of... So this is my female astronaut. Oh, wow. Okay. I just found this, and she's a tennis player. But because she's in movement, we have the same kind of hair, like the, the volume and the movement in the hair. Yeah. So awesome. worlds apart, but like visual similarities. Yeah. That's gonna... awesome. It's like so well linked. Is that from the same magazine? It is. It's still from time. Mm. Yeah, they must have been doing some sort of female special this time because it's all kind of strong female. Maybe that's why it's in our stash. That might yeah. Be short. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. So you got this is Spain where you are, right? Yeah. It's, it's Spain, right? Yeah, so it's Spanish territory, but we're actually positioned off the coast of Africa. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're about 100 kilometers from Morocco. Wow. Yeah. So how, do you get to Morocco by, by plane or there's a train or boat? No, you have to go by plane and you actually have to go to the mainland. You have to go all the way back to the mainland and then oh. across. Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the only boat routes are the pateras that are used by people coming over from Morocco, immigrants who come over. Um, okay. And this year there's been so, so many of them. Um, so, so many. In fact, quite a lot of the local artists included um, some commentary on the immigration from Morocco because it's been so dangerous. Um, there's been so many lives lost yeah. um, and it's kind of having yeah, a it's, big impact on people here this year. It's one of the, one of the most dangerous immigrant Roots. journeys, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's I think it's a really, um, I don't know it's that they're rough. I think it's that the currents take them off course. So quite yeah. often boats will set off. And then they never arrive, you know, they right. a boat off the coast of El Hierro, but I mean off the coast by about 500 kilometers. It had just drifted and drifted and drifted. And um, I think there were three survivors on a boat of about 30. Oh my time. God. Yeah, it's really, really horrific. Yeah. Really like horrific. the, on, 
so it's not really a, a good day. But on a on a good crossing, they can they can kind of make it within about five days, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, yes. But the boat that Sarah's talking about, they'd been they'd kind of missed their target and they'd been adrift for over a month. Oh gosh. Yeah, I was watching this um, a few about two years ago. Uh, this documentary about you know because a lot of migrants from um, they were coming also via the Mediterranean near um, Turkey and Greece. Yeah. And you know, like Turkey's um, making a lot of money with this, like selling, for example, vests. You know, for the for the people in case their boats um, sink or whatever. So like kind of life-saving best but apparently they don't work you know they're not from the right material and you know and charging people like something like 50 euros worth for a vest you know or uh, all sorts of things you know they're like oh, you know it's just ridiculous and uh you know it's actually damaging more rather than actually helping them but they just kind of turned this into a money making you know uh, i'm not sure how it is now but this was from a few years ago just sort of saying that and also some of the money that the european union was giving to turkey to, you know for the refugees that they have there on the camps you know um that don't get there, you know, that they don't actually get to the camps, you know, the politicians or whoever, corrupt people are like keeping the money and, yeah, and the camps are like really horrible conditions because this money never gets there or the, 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 the supplies or, you know, it's just, it's just grotesque, you know. Yeah, grotesque is exactly the right word. It is. And this war in Syria just never seems to end and you know, no one's even talking about it since the corona. Everyone's just, you know, corona, corona, which is, you know, of course, it's good, that, not good, but I'm saying, of course, it's important. But, you know, there's like so many other issues that have just completely been ignored. Yeah. Which still go on, you know, it's still a problem. Yeah. So, yeah, I found also this. It's like um, a hand out of a window. Your images, I'm kind of jealous of them. They're like <laughs> yeah. really cool. Do, do, do you have any ID magazines? Because <laughs> they are kind of much more, much more, um, yeah, I think they're more arty. Or maybe just they used to be more arty. Oh, look, I've got, I've got Moby also as an astronaut. I'm cutting that. I found Moby, like a picture of Moby. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to go for a fashion one. I think maybe time's too serious. Yeah. I'm going to go for a fashion mag. Yeah. I always find my best images in fashion magazines. And National Geographic, I must say. That's also a good source. All historical books, you know, where you find, like, all historical images, photos of places. I find it really difficult to cut up National Geographic. <laughs> I was just going to say the same thing. What did you say? I find it really difficult to cut up National Geographic. Yeah, me too. And there's images uh, on both sides that I think, oh, I want to use that. And yeah. But then I don't use either, you know? Yeah. That's right. So it's like the same, you know, like with this ID magazine, I've had it so long. as like, oh, I can't cut it up, you know, but then I don't even look at it. Yeah. And now I'm looking at it and I'm finding some really cool images and kind of going back to the past, also a distance thing going back to, it's from 2002. So you know, almost 20 years. Yeah. And re revisiting pop culture and everything back then. Yeah. You know, it's kind of interesting. So, yeah. This could, you know, I've, could, go, are you could go nicely somehow. I don't know. Yeah. Like I'm going to see when I put it together. I've just cut out, um, it's from a pit. Oh, it's very small. I'll come in close. It's from a picture of um, Lady Diana, Princess Diana. And this is a, a brooch. I think that's probably the queen inside it. But there's quite um, a distance between their experience and mine. So that's going into my pile. I think there's probably quite a distance between both of their experiences. Yeah. Mine are all kind of travel related. Well, I wouldn't know because you've not shared any of them yet. We're still waiting. I'm eagerly cutting. I know, but we want to see. 
So, okay, let me finish my ostriches. That's so great. <laughs> I'm realising that this fashion magazine has been printed on recycled paper. That must be a new mm. thing, isn't it? Like yeah, it. that's really good. So I've got kind of some nice waves. Yeah, nice. awesome. Contrasted with a surfer in the snow. Ah, wow. You don't it's like on a, a snowy beach. Oh, wow. Okay. Order on a snowy beach. Hmm. And then I have a, a tuk tuk. Tuk tuk, okay. Cool. Surfboards, which kind of the, the image itself looks quite old. Okay. Like looking looking at the image, the the rest of the image looks yeah. would be from like the eighteen hundreds. Wow, it's beautiful. And then there's just yeah. some bright white surfboards strapped to the top of the I found this one that's quite a nice. Mm. Yeah. Like there's, there's like people there in the background. Sort of big distance. I wish I had actually A3 paper now because the images are quite big. Anyway, I'll find, or maybe I'll just put A4 paper together yeah. until the end of the world. It's actually a nice, also a nice. And also, yeah, words, you know, uh, if you, I also like to kind of ming mingle words and phrases if I find something or, um, you know, the, you know, the cut up method of William Burroughs. And I think um, David Bowie was using it also when creating lyrics for his uh, music. Like you just get a whole bunch of words together, you know, and you mix them all up and then you just kind of like, make sentences or write poetry with them you know yeah um, i like that too i like that very much we've got an artist in the festival this year who, who works like that with like printed printed images and stuff and she, she collages yeah collages poetry yeah kate tough yeah so how many artists do you have all together? There like, must be loads, right? In the festival this year. This year we've got 350. Wow. 58, I think. Wow. Like just over 600, 600 pieces of art. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, we're quite busy. <laughs> right. I just found a hand holding it's like a really posh phone and in the back of the phone there's a 50 euro note quite like that bit of commercialism put that in there are you wanting that because it's slipping yeah. in my pack well then put it in your pile in your pile hmm. So has the weather been over there? Have you guys had any hurricanes or any time with or floods or? Quite lucky. We're kind of on the edge of the um, of the hurricane route. Okay. We get kind of the tail end of quite a lot of them. We get quite high winds and um, sometimes we get kalimas, which is where we get the sand blows over from the Sahara when the wind changes direction. It gets really really hot and really dusty. Right. Okay. In terms of super dangerous weather, we don't uh -huh. really, we don't really get that much. Like the most dangerous thing here is the heat from the sun. Right. Okay. Yeah, we're so lucky. We also don't have kind of lots of poisonous animals or anything okay. dangerous, really. No, it's really quite tame. Yeah. That's that's really good. And you've been living there how long now? 
three years. Yeah, just three, three years now. Huh? Right. In like before, like after Brexit was announced, or you decided to leave, or no, we decided to escape before Brexit. Oh, yes. okay. <laughs> we didn't think that Brexit was actually going to happen either. We thought that it would be kind of um, thrown out as a yeah. stupid thing, you know, because it's a stupid thing. But then yeah. <laughs> that didn't happen. Um, unbelievably. I actually thought, you know, when the vote, yeah, when it happened, I, I thought, no way, it's not going to happen, you know. And then when we woke up the next day, and it was like the results came. We were all like so in shock because there's a lot of British people also living here in Berlin, you know, since years. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone was so shocked, you know. People already started like, oh my God, how do I become German? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like that was the first thing people were like worrying about their status and, you know, going and getting visas and becoming German citizens. So Germany was actually even offering like, passports like citizenships you know to a lot of people from england from britain right i found this is quite nice too sort of oh yeah that's yeah. beautiful that's really nice. nice like i think she's looking at there's some kind of fairy vision fairy you see oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. I know that's really that's very distance. I'm um, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's just I'm still on one magazine. Wow, it's a very the ID. magazine. Oh. It has so much. This this one's particular has got a lot of nudity in in it, like everything, men and women, which is really nice. I just found this, which is quite like. Oh, like, that's cool. Yeah. It's a heart, right? It's yeah. a heart balloon. A heart balloon being stomped on. <laughs> so, you guys been to Berlin at all? It's on the go list. Yeah, you should definitely come and visit when all this bullshit is there. I guess you can travel, right? I mean, from your. Yeah. Yeah, now that we're d d double vaccinated, as they say, um, right. we can go pretty much wherever in the EU, it seems, at the minute. That seems to be kind of quite reciprocal. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit more difficult traveling to the UK because they're not recognizing the EU's um, vaccination certificate. No idea why, but they're not. So it still means so there's a lot of tests and quarantine and stuff like that. God, I didn't know that they, they don't recognize it. Is yeah. it because they they want it to be theirs, or I yeah. mean, they want you to go and vaccinate yourselves in England, or yeah, they want it to be an NHS vaccination, or it doesn't count. Right. Okay. So stupid. So don't really know when that will change. <laughs> we'll see. But for for the EU, it's kind of yeah. It seems to be like. A lot simpler now than it was a few months ago yeah okay i can't wait to start traveling again it oh me too i've been invited to serbia on a for a performance festival in september okay and yeah it's like the, my first time since september i was i did a residency in czech republic like in a in a forest in september last year so that was my last time when i was actually out of the country when you know and i was supposed to go to ghana I was offered a residency there, but I just got some work in May and I had to stay here. And I told them, I said, you know, I'd rather stay here and earn money because I haven't been earning so much over the winter. And they were really, you know, kind of really nice. I said, okay, you can come back next year. Oh, great. Oh. Yeah. And yeah. And also the Ghana thing would have had to have so many vaccines all at once <laughs> as well. Yeah. You know, not just um, corona vaccines, also malaria and so many other things. Yeah, sure. You know, when you go there. Uh, and, and you can't you can't even get a visa if you don't have any of these vaccines. Yeah. No, not so much the, the corona vaccine. It was more like, um, yeah, the, the vaccines that they require so you don't get sick. Yeah. Stuff like yellow fever and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yellow fever, malaria, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. 
um, pills for against mosquito bites and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, now I've put like two A4s together because I've got some bigger images. So now I'm going to sort of assemble. Okay. I will, I will start assembling too. Yeah. So I've got a whole bunch of images that I cut out already, you know, with the theme of distance, such as physical distance or no distance, no physical distance, complete closeness, travel, um, you know, um, places to travel to um, until the end of the world. Okay, this is my final image that I've cut out. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to start assembling. I might actually look for something to assemble on rather than a white piece of paper. I'm not so good with plain paper, you know? Okay, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, we'll find something like cardboard or anything that could, you know, it's easy to, like, glue on. Cardboard's okay. quite good. Or boxes. Yeah. Um... I might look for a big image of some form, like a, I don't know, like maybe a landscape or something. Sorry. I'm going to switch magazines, have a look. Do you want to look through some of these? I, yeah, the ones that you've popped on the floor. Could I have a look yeah. through there? Because with what I've got so far, we could do with more table space, couldn't we? <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Yeah, you see something like this, I feel, is what I need. Hmm. Are you assembling too? I found some three pictures of men from far flung corners of the earth. Wow, that's amazing. Interesting mix. Okay, this is going to be my background. Mm, interesting. So, my background is going to be no distance. This is a super close up of a trainer. Cool. Yeah, like it. <laughs> okay, on it. <laughs> Do you do a lot of um, kind of arranging and testing before you stick or do you yeah. straight away? Yeah. I pretty much like just, yeah, and I, you know, it's like a puzzle. This is the puzzling. That's the hardest bit now. Like I've got all this and then I'm saying, mm, how do we put them all, how do I put them all together that it makes sense, that it actually, um, it's aesthetically interesting and it's not just, you know, pictures glued on a paper or some, something. So that's actually an artwork yeah. that it becomes the artwork. Yeah. And that's kind of something that's quite difficult to explain, isn't it? Like how yeah. does it go from just being separate images on yeah. it, like you say, just stuck? How does it go from that to an artwork? Yeah. Oh, I don't like that. I like that. Do you always keep your collages rectangular or square, or do you sometimes have stuff that comes off the, the page? Um, no, sometimes I actually even do collages inside all magazines, you know, like in the center. It just depends on what kind of, what kind of mood I'm in and yeah, what I find also. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you know, I like, I like the square. I like the whole A4 or A3, um, you know, cause then it's nice cause then you can get really great frames. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very true. So I'm kind of at a point where I feel like some of this is going to work and some of it's just not going to work. Is that, can I like get rid of stuff if I don't? Of course. 
you know, not everything has to go in. If it doesn't, you know. Yeah, I'm actually struggling with this, the putting together bit. Yeah, this is always the hard bit. Well, not hard, but, you know, just because there's so many ways, you know. Yeah. I'm just trying to cut out kind of the dead space. Mm. Yeah. I didn't do that to start with. And now that I'm arranging it, I'm just cutting out the bits that really are dead space. Because sometimes I think that actually the dead space is almost as active. Yeah. Oh, you'll be able to see my concentration face on the Zoom. I've only just realised that. <laughs> Your concentration tongue. Yeah, I'm really bad at cutting out. It's just something that I find really difficult. So I have to really, really concentrate to get things how I want them. Yeah, I understand. If I don't, then I end up with kind of really wonky edges or I cut a bit off that I need or mm -hmm. a bit like my handwriting. It's just really naturally I'm a messy cutter. So I, I just like kind of found something else that I want to put together. It's funny because, yeah, I, I only saw it just until now. Like, I was going to make one big thing, but then I found two e images which are very simple, which I'm going to stick together. I'll show you. Okay. I'll, I'll do it. I'll glue it, and then I'll show you when it's ready. I think I might glue you that bit, because I really like that bit. And then I might have to think about what I'm going to do. Maybe I could cut this in half and have two pieces, like a diptych. Could be a diptych. That is what it's going to be. wait to see what people um, produce watching this. Yeah. Can we tell if people are watching or not yet? How many people have been? Uh, I don't think we've got anyone live at the moment. No, it's okay. No, just us, unfortunately. So I've got, I've started with this. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm going to go through Marie Claire now and see what Marie Claire has to offer. Yeah. 2001, so 20 years oh. old. God, 20 years? No, don't say that. <laughs> I'm sure that 2001 was yesterday. <laughs> uh, it's in my yellow pencil case. Oh, is it not in my bag? Sorry. Let me go. You sit down. Okay. It's because I had it out um, the other day doing my sketchbook. Do you have many friends on the island? You guys know many locals? or? Yeah, we're really lucky, actually. We have um, a really great friend circle here that's kind of a mix of locals and also other people who've moved here like us uh, yeah but people and you, are you originally from middle uh newcastle or around there or in england or yeah i'm from i was well i was born in derbyshire actually but then i spent most of my life in yorkshire so i've got okay. a northern accent <laughs> Because I have a, that's why I noticed, because I have a friend in Berlin, I've known also since the 19th, since I've been living here. And uh, he's, he says the same, he's got the same accent as you, and he says, Uz. 
yeah. <laughs> and that's why I kind of thought I better, you know, that's why I know maybe you could be from the same area. Yeah. And we always take the piss because he's the only English person I know who says Uz. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it. I think it's really cute. We were talking to Simon saying air. Eh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm originally from Liverpool. Okay. So I used to have a, a really, really strong accent. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I was working in hospitality down in London. In uh-huh. The 80s and 90s. Um, Long time ago. And it was, yeah, at that point, the, the Liverpool accent was really frowned upon. It was a really kind of bad place to be from. And Okay. So I, I worked hard to kind of lose my accent so that I could be accepted in the business that I was that I was working in. I understand. So I don't have as a strong accent anymore, but my my daughter is uh, she grew up and spent a long time in, in Liverpool and she has the She has the accent, okay. She, she has the strongest Liverpool accent. Yeah. <laughs> It's lush, actually. I really and love her accent. Everybody knows when I've been talking to her on the phone because it, it just comes straight back. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I'm just going to stick this and then I'm going to show you a, an update of what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. So I ripped my background in half, um, and I'm gonna do like a little a little roll so that you can. Oh, that's it. nice. That's really beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. I've done quite a few times like that as well, just like kind of image after image yeah, next like to each other. Yeah. Do you need that bit? Oh, but no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now I'm going to work on the other one. I'm going to have two that kind of work with each other. Somehow. Ooh, maybe that's the right choice. So I now have an option. I can either use my close up of the trainer. Or okay. On the reverse, I have this wave with like a little bit of a surfer traveling down it. So mm -hmm. I might flip. Oh, and then maybe they go together like that. Ah, oh, you see, when you start, it kind of starts <laughs> coming together, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like, wow, all of a sudden it clicks. Yeah, I think this is it. I think this is the moment. How are you getting on? Pretty good. I'm kind of linking... Interesting. I have to say, Gabby, it's an absolute joy being a participant and not a facilitator. This is yeah. so happy right now. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> Do you get the chance to participate often? Um, yeah, yeah. And I actually, I have been doing more of that. Like I used to organize more events before the lockdown and I used to have a monthly event called the Poetic Groove, which is like mixing spoken word and performance art and live music. And it's always, it was really hard to, you know, write new material when you're organizing, when you're facilitating. So yeah, I kind of took the back seat as well. And I prefer to just, yeah, just to create because I was missing that a lot. You know, when you organize, it's really hard to be creative at the same time or, yeah, um, yeah no, it's, it's, it's really nice. It's very nice. 
So now I've flipped my half and then I've stuck it back together. So now I have this. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. I need some more like commercialism. You need to share what you've got. No one can see. You have to remember <laughs> that no one can see down here for people to see. Yeah. Show it up to the camera. I'm so focused on cutting and gluing. Yeah. I shall. I shall. Yeah. Is that something that you really need? What's that? Yes. Are was, you sure? It was cut out for a purpose. If you have a look through the magazine, there's that, that fits perfectly. There's that same word in. Uh, yeah, in a couple of different sizes. Okay. And colours. I know, but that's the colour. I'll take that one and cut out a different one for me. I'm joking. I'm going to find a different one. Okay, so what to do with this side? mine together I'm now pulling it apart <laughs> if I can oh no it might be too late it's hard oh it doesn't seem to want to okay well then it's not meant to be okay go thank around you. it with thank something you. else that's very reassuring thank you <laughs> Then I will recommit. I will add extra glue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really nice to see when the kids really get into it. Like they don't understand at first, you know. Yeah. And what you know, and then once you kind of they get the idea that you put images together to create an, a new image or even a new meaning, they really just really love it, you know, coming up with their own versions and you know, and there's no rules, you know, so it's like they love it. Yeah. Um, I actually I was doing camps uh, last week. I was uh, with kids. I was directing this camp, which was really exhausting. You know, after kids have been homeschooled and not used to routines or, you know, schedules or even being with so many kids around them all of a sudden, you know, and having rules and all that, you know, because you can't have a camp without rules. Um, you know, it, it was it was a challenge, especially the first week. And we're in the middle of the forest in this old schloss uh, uh, castle. And... Uh, I had a collage making uh, work uh, activity that I was offering in the afternoon and um, I wrote down collage, you know, and um, one girl kept coming up, said, I like to write down myself because I, you know, there could only be 12, you know, um, in the, in the workshop. And she goes, I like to sign up, but I don't want to do anything to my face. And I was like, what, what do you mean? She said, oh, I, I don't want to do anything to my face. Like, is this what you're doing? I don't want to put anything in my face. I said, what are you talking about? It's a collage. It's an art thing. Oh, so it's not nothing to do with collagen, collagen. You know, it's a, it's a colla collagen, you know. Yeah. She thought it was like, you know, I was going to give them injections or something to put in their faces. Like, she just didn't understand, like, collage, you know, with our right collage making, you know. And she thought it was about, you know, <laughs> injecting a face or <laughs> putting you know, colla collagen inje uh, injections or something, you know. <laughs> I'm like, no, honey. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're like... 12 <laughs> she wanted to know what i was gonna do to her face you know before oh was so funny sorry it was just really like i had to laugh that's crazy yeah intervention yeah and one of the other counselors was telling me another story from a from a one of his camps that he came from 
and he was saying that uh, one Russian girl in the camp, you know, had this um, uh, uh, tablet that she was constantly carrying with her everywhere. And the camp director said, no, look, we're going on an excursion, leave uh, your tablets, you know, uh, in your rooms, you know. And this girl, you know, still had a backpack and the director was saying, so, where's your tablet? And she goes, tablet? What tablet? Where's your tablet? I told you to put the tablet in, in your room. She said, but I do have my tablet in your room, you know, and you can't actually search their bags. That's not like the done thing. So and then the, he, the director says, all right, show me the, tab the, the tablets in your room. So they go to the girl's room. <laughs> she pulls, like, she draws something like a little packet of, like, medicine, <laughs> takes up a tablet and says to the, to the director, this is the tablet. I told you, the tablet is in my drawer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like... It was completely like you know lost in translation. Like he was, you know, because like they they called them tablets. No, not tablets. They called them something else in Russian, you know. Uh -huh. And I, I I don't know why. Yeah, it was just hilarious. Anyway, um, just they said you know this this is a tablet I have, but it's in my room. It's not in my backpack, you know. <laughs> it was cute. Yeah, because we only meant to speak English to them, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the idea is that they learn English by being at camp. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so, you know, so often that we have these little misunderstandings because a lot of the kids, you know, just don't really speak English or they don't understand because they're quite little, you know. Mm. So I got my second one. Likewise, where she goes, the goat, the yoga lady. And what's at the top? What's that? Well, I, this is an old flyer for the sort of performing arts, mus um, performing arts festival Berlin. It was a flyer for this year's festival. Oh, okay. It's kind of like, um, it's just buildings of Berlin kind of, uh, you know, melting in one another, ah. coming to a center. So I just, I just thought it fitted really well in. I mean, it has no really, uh, I just wanted to f get rid of that gap there. Hmm. I think that I might have finished. So I stuck my two backgrounds together. Oh, that's beautiful. And then I added in, in this lady who's, who's climbing out the sea. And then at the yep. bottom of my hand with nice. this expensive phone. How do you decide, Gabby, when your um, pieces are finished? Well, when I think, okay, it looks finished, like you sort of get an idea, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, if I find something else and I just, then I stick it on, see, oh, no, it doesn't really go. And then I think, well, that's enough. You know, I don't need to crowd it because then everything gets lost. Yeah. yeah. Just so, um, no. You've lost your fish. I've lost my fish. Is it on the floor? No, sorry. Hmm. I'm really enjoying this. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it's a really nice I love I love collage making. And it's funny because I only got I got into it like about eight years ago. Like I always love collage, but I never really made them, you know, and then I went a friend of mine was putting a zine together and she said, oh, I'm doing a workshop, you know, and what it is, it's like, we are just have to make collages like for eight hours in this little gallery space in Berlin. <laughs> and then we you know we have an exhibition in the evening. So it was basically, we met in the morning at 10 o'clock, we started making the collages and, you know, it was eight artists or something in two sort of rooms. And then we stuck everything on the walls, you know, afterwards. And it was, wow, it looks, you know, really cool, and I really got into it, and then I just, you know, couldn't stop making them. Yeah. You know, there's um, a collage collective on the island. It's called the Periscope Lanzarote. Oh, okay. It just happens that it's all females. It wasn't planned like that. The yeah the started it, but they put out an open call for anyone that was interested to part of it and it just so happened that everybody that said they were interested is women oh that's good 
but they're meeting, they were meeting pretty regularly, kind of once a month and making stuff together pre-COVID okay. times. Um, and then during COVID times, the two artists who got together and sort of instigated it all were putting prompts online. And then okay. it was like you had a month, was it, to yeah. make things. And people, I mean, then because it was online, people from all around the world joined in. Um, right. And that was really great, actually, because it was just kind of, it kind of kept you connected to each other, but also to the practice, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's great. I hope that they're going to do something soon. I might miss it out. Yeah, that's good. Are you going to join them next time? Yeah, so I'd always um, tried, but it always fell when I had a workshop or I was out the country or right. I think they had three meets before Corona and each of them, I wasn't there. And then the fourth one, I was like, I'm here, brilliant. And then lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've um, joined in online with the prompts, but right. I've, not, um, I've not joined in in person yet. But I'm very much looking forward to doing so actually. Yeah, I feel like this is done. I'm, I'm spending a lot of time looking at it and feeling like that's it. So I think I'm going to put it to one side. And I think, I don't know if you ever do this, Gabby, but this is actually a cutout. Like it's the waste from the other piece. But yeah. I like the shape of it and I feel like for distance it kind of conveys something so yeah you, you should just add it on to something for sure like use it I you know as much as you you know it's sometimes it's really difficult to even um use like both this on one page is on each side really great images and it's like oh god I, I hate to use you know because they're so great and yeah both images you know Outback Odyssey Oh, waterfalls. Oh, that's nice. I'm going to make one like, you know, sort of travel fantasies. Okay. Everyone has a lot of travel fantasies right now, I'm sure. Yeah. Where is your kind of, I know that you said you might be going to Serbia, but where, if you could go anywhere, like right now, where would you go? Oh, God. That's <laughs> so hard. I probably would like to go back to Australia. I haven't been back to Australia in 19 years. So maybe I'd like to go and visit Australia. Mm. I don't know. I've been man me meaning to go home every year. But unfortunately, you know, I just, it's so expensive to go home. And there's always, you know, opportunities here. I'm thinking, oh, next year, next year. And I don't know. I haven't gone yet, you know. Mm. So it's I'm just thinking me. like Australia, I'd probably like to visit home. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big commitment to to kind of go for that journey, isn't it? It's yeah, such a long journey, such an expensive journey. Yeah, and also you can't stay there for like two weeks. You have to sh stay there for a few months, you know. And I'm thinking maybe I'll go if I find some festivals that I could apply for, and at least they could invite me. So at least they pay for the airfare or something, you know. But it's, yeah, it's just been so difficult to find things like that. You know, Australia's, the art scene there, it's much more different than here. It's much more commercial, mainstream. You know, if, if you want to be invited, you know, it's not sort of alternative enough or, um, or maybe it's becoming like that now. I don't know. As I said, I can't comment. I haven't been there in a while. So, um, you know, but... I, I am kind of homesick, like, you know, like, especially now that I'm on Facebook and see so many friends and, you know, how they're suffering or not suffering or, you know what I mean? Like, you just want to kind of be there and share with them. Yeah. I don't know. My parents, are unfortunately, they're stuck in Romania. You know, they've been here since two years already. And before the lockdown, they came over, you know, and they were going to come and visit me just in the month of 2020, like in the month of uh, March of 2020, because it's my birthday. And yeah, unfortunately, they couldn't, um, you know, they couldn't come. And now they're stuck in Romania because they can't actually, Australia's locked up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're not letting, even though my both my parents have both been vaccinated, 
you know, uh, we'll still ha they'll still have to go and stay in quarantine in a hotel, you know, for like two weeks. And then, I don't know, there's no flights directly to Melbourne, apparently. I don't know. It's very difficult. They find it difficult mm. to get back. So, you know, in a way I'm glad, but still like, you know, it's hard to even get into Romania. They kept saying to me, oh, you know, like the, you have to be apparently to be vaccinated before coming. I was like, that can't be right. You know, there's no way, there's no vaccine, um, how do you call it, yet. And I haven't had time to vaccinate yet. You know, I haven't, I've been, I'm, you know, my job, my summer job, I have to travel to these camps and I'm doing camps. I'm doing camps next two weeks. I'm going to the sea, to the North Sea. I'll be running a camp in, on this island called Zilt and another. So, you know, it's just like, and I thought, I don't want to get vaccinated in case I get sick and I can't do the camps and I need the money, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, a lot of my friends who've been vaccinated, they've actually, you know, um, were like really out for a week after or they, yeah. their arms, they couldn't lift up their arms or, you know, it was sore and... I was thinking, oh no, I, you know, I need, I, I can't, you know, uh, I can't be like, um, like that, you know, I have to be strong, you know, and yeah. then in September, then I'll, you know, take a look and see what's, what's around, who's getting what, I mean, it's been a bit of a fuck up here with the whole uh, appointments, you know, the relevance, only the like, you know, relevant people got them first, you know, like doctors and whatnot, hospital staff, you know, teachers. I mean, although I'm a teacher, but I'm freelance, so different. You don't help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We understand. <laughs> That's like a worldwide experience, I think. <laughs> like you're a teacher, but you're not really. But yeah, I am. I am a <laughs> yeah. teacher. Actually. Yeah, exactly. And I'm really oh, globalized paradise lost. That's nice. So it's kind of, I've got kind of old traditions, and old kind of old vehicles and old fishermen. Yeah. Um, but then also a big container ship. And then, like, tourism. Yeah. Mm. Nice. So I kind of like the, yeah, tourism exploring the, exploring mm. paradise, but. What's the price? Yep. Yeah. You heard that, like, now in uh, Venice, they're not letting big ships pull up into the harbour any longer. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, because they completely disturb the whole ecosystem, and I think good on them. And you know, especially in Venice, where they're experiencing such a huge, you know, destruction from climate change and tourism yeah. as well. Yeah, I saw a video on like, and they were showing the the wakes that the that the cruise ships bring as they as they pull into the harbor. Yeah. 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 So fragile there, I mean, you know. Yeah. Did you did you see it? No. That's all right. The cruise ships are pulling in and they're creating like a huge wake behind them. What do you mean a wake? A wake is like the wave that kind of the ship creates as it travels through the water. All right, okay. Um every day's a school day. Yeah, there you go. And the the wakes were actually coming in and coming over the level of like the terraces and stuff oh wow and it was a how damn just, yeah just insane yeah. like you say when when venice is struggling with global warming as it is yeah, yeah. this is going to become something but i don't know what <laughs> <laughs> So I started with this this little wiggly bit and then I've added on the brooch and now I'm kind of it's following the country line on this map. Line of Chile. It is Chile, yeah. Um but yeah, I'm not sure now what to do. I've got these other bits maybe here. I don't know. 
So this is um, until the end of July, right? The festival, the whole month of July, right? Yeah, yeah. the whole month of July. Yeah, that's great. Second of August is when everything is stopping, the last event on the first. Right, okay. Yeah. We've got like on the 31st, I think it is, we're having a digital dinner. That's really fun. If you're, I don't know, it sounds like you're going to be really busy. Um, <laughs> But it's really, but, you know, yeah, I mean, I'll be because I'm not directing the camps. So I'll have some time because I'll just be, um, you know, um, t a teaching, doing stuff, not actually directing like I was. So I'll probably have some more time. So, yeah, please do keep me in touch. I mean, I will be able to. And I know these places have really good Internet as well. Like the forest didn't have such good Internet connection. That was the problem. I wasn't so much in touch. But these two places where I'm going at the North Sea, they have internet. So I could even, you know, do stuff from the camps, you know, in my night off or afternoon off. Yeah, okay. that'd be nice. Yeah. So, yeah, do keep me in touch. Yeah. yeah, I think that the, I mean, there's stuff happening pretty much every day or every other day. <laughs> yeah, but I've noticed. It's great. Like a, a digital dinner where everybody gathers on Zoom just like you would do if we were all there in person, you know, share some food and some drinks together and just try and have a bit more of an informal gathering. Yeah. Um, and one of the artists suggested a reflection session. So that's the very last event is people just coming together and sharing kind of their experience of the festival, what they thought, what they liked, what they didn't like, that sort of thing. Right. Okay. And then between then and now there's all sorts of stuff going on got a panel discussion tonight around table got some live music we've got theater performances right yeah there's all sorts so we're really lucky actually really great great contribution this year from lots yeah. of artists which again kind of bodes well for next year when right. hopefully people can travel because the the first year when we did we were you know, we had the physical exhibitions and we were allowed people to travel. We had people from all over the place make the commitment and came over. Yeah. So yeah, well, I was, you know, I was hoping that maybe we could, you know, I could come over too for the whatever. Like, I, did, I this was when I put stuff in. Yeah. You know, uh, I thought, well, it'd be great. I would love to come in if it was, you know, physical. But of course it wasn't possible, so... Um, well, that's great. Well, is it quite, quite is it quite cheap there where you guys are? Is it like affordable for Airbnb and that sort of stuff? Or yeah, I mean, compared to Berlin, you'll probably find it really reasonable. <laughs> from right. Heard of what people like when my friend Lillian went to Berlin. She's from the UK, and she said that Berlin was quite a lot more expensive, and yeah. I think that he is quite a lot cheaper than the UK in terms of things that if you were going to be, you know, staying here like Airbnbs. Yeah, um, yeah. Drinks, food, transport, all of that yeah. kind of stuff's really quite, quite reasonable here. Yeah. Um, Lola had the same experience, didn't she? She was from Berlin. Yeah, she was actually. Yeah, I forgot that. Yeah, yeah Berlin's actually it's become it used to be really cheap, but it's become more expensive because um, all of a sudden it just became cheap to be here, and then all the investors started buying houses and jacking up the rent and. Yeah, so it just, you know, like there's so many spaces now. People are fighting to keep their homes and also their spaces. Like we've had during Corona times, well, since last year, a lot of independent spaces, uh, squats, house projects, um, you know, uh, closed down and evacuated or kicked out. And, you know, they've been using this time now, the investors to, you know, because we can't have gatherings, you know, so there's been no protests. Oh, there have been protests, even though they, they thought it wouldn't be any protests because of all, you know, uh, the corona regulations. And some people have been going out in there in the streets because we are actually allowed, if it's, um, it's a protest against something, then we are actually allowed to be in crowds as long as we cover our mouths and, you know, we keep sort of social distance, you know. Um, yeah. You know, so we've had so many houses evacuated, you know, it's just, yeah, 
it's just been, you know, a lot of people are leaving Berlin, you know, because it's like they can't afford to live here anymore, you know, um, because they've lost their homes or, you know, it's, it's just been awful. It's really been awful. You know, I've never, you know, in a lot of spaces, a lot of independent like bars and venues, you know, they couldn't, they didn't survive. So they closed and people are thinking, well, you know, what's the point of me living here? I came here because Berlin was so alternative and, and now it's just closing, you know, place, these places don't exist anymore though. They're struggling or, you know, might as well go home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently New York has been experiencing that, you know, people have realized it like, well, what's the point? We can work from home. You know, I don't, I can be on the outskirts of New York. I don't have to be in Manhattan or Brooklyn or whatever, you know? Yeah. And yeah, you know, it's, it's I guess the whole world is reshaping, right? Yeah, yeah. I reckon so. You know, a lot of people that are kind of realizing that life doesn't have to, be so focused around yeah like going to work and going to the office yeah yeah and you can do that at home and you can work from home you don't it, even like big major companies or banks have started to realize that you know they don't need all the big office blocks in wall street or near there in manhattan and you know they could save so much money mm -hmm. um yeah and also New York has been really tough on them as well. Like, you know, they there were so many sick people and a lot of people have left because, you know, it was hard for them to, you know, be in lockdown in their small flats, whatever. Yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, we're so lucky because we have this huge roof terrace here. So even when our lockdown was really severe, we weren't allowed out the house for anything at all. For yeah. Years. Um, yeah no it's i mean it's true i have a balcony so that was and also we have a garden house okay. in the south of berlin so during the first lockdown last year in april may we also spent a lot of time there um yeah chilling you know being there it was you know what's there was really nice to have that sort of refuge place to drive to it you know and be in the nature it's in the forest, but you know, in Germany, they have in, in, all over Germany, not just Berlin. After the war, I mean, even before the war, you know, they actually wanted people to um, be able to grow their own vegetables. So all these areas, they were green areas, they kind of like formed into private gardens. I mean, not private, like the, the land is from Berlin, mm -hmm. but you buy lots there, you know, and you have the, or you have a contract for like a hundred years and it's a house often with a small house, a shed. Other people have actually, you know, made bigger houses. They live there, you know, it's called um, Streber Garden. It's after the guy, one of the politicians that came up with this idea. And then they, they became in handy, especially after World War One, when people could grow vegetables and, you know, when there was like food was scarce after the war. Yeah. So they would grow their own potatoes or whatever, feed themselves. And it's become a tradition, you know, and it was considered to be like really for older people or whatever. But since the Corona, everyone wants one now. You have to be on a waiting list now to get it, you know. No one was interested in before because so many people are into going out, going to the parks, to the lakes, but when we're all locked in, you know, and uh, everyone started, wow, oh, a garden, I love to get one. Where do you get one? How? And it's a process, very bureaucratic. You have to be on a waiting list and you have to wait and whatnot. And so we were lucky, you know, to have that place and we could go to and, you know, also plant. I've been like planting vegetables and fruit and learning all about gardening as well. And yeah, it's been a nice thing also, you know, being involved in that you know, like picking up a new hobby sort of thing or yeah. during the corona, you know, since you can't go out so much to other events or whatever, might as well go and work on the garden, you know. Yeah. Um, That's one thing that I'm, we really miss, don't we? Yeah. Having, yeah. But like, yeah. we kind of, where we lived on the island when we first, like when we first moved here, we, we lived kind of in the countryside and we had we were lucky enough that the person that we were living with had a huge vegetable plot. Yeah. Um, 
and she grew all the fruit and vegetables. She ran a yoga retreat, and so okay. there was enough fruit and vegetables to kind of feed the yoga retreat. Yeah. Um, and now we've got a, a beautiful place right on the sea. They, oh. You step out the door and there's like two seconds and that's like, it's like five, ten yards away. Yeah. And we've got a, a beautiful natural swimming pool on the edge oh. of the ocean. Nice. So we are really lucky, but yeah. Yeah. I would like to be able to grow. Yeah. To grow our own food. Yeah, and the, the, how the law is that basically if you have a garden like that, you actually have to grow vegetables. Like, it's all like, yeah. you can't just have it for leisure, you know, you can't just party there. And there's an inspection like twice a year or once a year, you know, to make sure that you are having compost as well, mm -hmm. that you actually are growing vegetables or fruits, that you're not cutting the hedges during when the birds are mating and you know all these rules which i never thought about before it's like oh yeah it makes sense now you know what i mean like um the bushes we can't trim them or anything during the mating season of the birds which is i think from april till whenever i don't know june you know i disturb the the the, the, the birds and it makes total sense but there aren't a lot of places that have rules like that that's cool no I mean, that's one good thing about living in Germany that I really enjoy. Um, some things, you know, it's bureaucracy and all that, old-fashioned, but some rules or laws just make sense, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, they think long-term. That's one thing I've noticed. The difference why I enjoy living here compared to Australia is um, they think long-term. It's not just, well, the go this government thinks only about the next four years and maybe four more years to get re-elected, you know. The Germans really think long-term. Like, how is this going to benefit in 2050 or how is this going to be and whatnot, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I'm getting really into this. I feel like I could do it for hours now we've started. I know. I was also wondering when I could reschedule. I'm going to look on the calendar. Is it okay to reschedule uh, the most spoken word performance? Was, would it be possible or what do you think? Yeah, it's absolutely possible. Um, just make sure that you tell us so that we can put it on the events page. And of course. Um, yeah. And when you're scheduling it in the calendar, just check it's not clashing with anything. Yeah, of course. Of course. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that would be great. We'd still love to have it. Yeah, because I, I got home on the Monday and I was so exhausted. The whole Tuesday, I just didn't have the power, you know, and really needed to, like, just chill after the thing. And um, I was at the, at the garden where the internet's not so good, so I couldn't even contact to let you know until the next day that I, I couldn't do it. I'm so sorry about that. It's not like me to cancel. It's just I was exhausted. Yeah, no, it's okay. Don't worry. If you've been teaching in camp, it's um, it's tough. Yeah, and the post, yeah, like it was definitely a new experience. The kids were so different to what I'm normally used to, and you can tell it's the effects of the lockdown and the homeschooling. And yeah. it, they were so overwhelmed. They were scared of everything. You know, like we took them canoeing down this creek. And it was really shallow water. They were scared they would drown. It's like, no, it's like to the knees, my God, you know, don't worry. Or they freaked out about all the insects um, that were on the, flying around, you know. Um, it's like, it's insects. We are the guests here. It's fine. They live here. You know, they're not coming here to get us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them needed more attention than others and were faking diseases or, you know, headaches and temperatures and stuff like that you know we had to test them every three days um which they were used to because they do that in school anyway but yeah it was definitely a different experience as i said the first week especially because a lot of them you know they've never they haven't had so many kids around them or the sharing a room like there was five or six of them in rooms 
um yeah so for us also we were understaffed there was only three of us you know and we're basically also the company we work for is trying to also save corners so they're overloading us with more work instead of actually just getting another counselor to come in you know because they want to save money of course yeah. so yeah it's been challenging you know so i'm glad to have this week to chill and everything and then next week you know go to the sea but also the sea um I know the activities there are a bit different, you know, so the kids will go there a bit older, but the ones I had last two weeks, it's a camp for little kids for seven, eight year olds. And a lot of them, you know, could not speak a word of English. Uh, I mean, I speak German and of course I could help them, but you know, they're in classes trying to learn English and it was impossible for the teachers because they're not allowed to speak German to them. That's the idea that the teachers speak English all the time. The kids have to like, figure out what what the instructions are whatever you know and um well, a lot of our counselors have just been in germany a year or two you know their german is i mean it's not a requirement to speak german but as a director i have to speak german i had to deal with the parents on the phone and stuff and the house you know we were staying in the the, the palace the villa which was beautiful uh, that's another thing, you know, the place was a little bit old, the kids freaked out because there was a little bit of smell, you know, from this old houses smell. And the kids were like, oh, what is this dump, you know, and I was trying to explain, look, the place has been shut down because of Corona also for two years, you know, it's this the first week it's opened. Um, the internet didn't work everywhere. The kids were pissed, you know, like, what? No internet. They're all gathering in one spot, you know, where the internet was was possible. Uh, so all this, you know, because a lot of them have been used to being in front of their computers, they, their phones during the lockdown. So they're like, and we, we were trying to get them away from that, you know, but then the parents still give them their phones, you know, because parents want to know everything, every single moment to be in touch with their kids, which, which was stupid because, you know, I was saying, don't leave them the phones. If there's anything wrong, I'll call you. I have your numbers. I have a phone, you know, it's not a problem. Yeah. I think it's so different now. I mean, I used to go out and play for hours and hours and hours, and my parents would have no idea where I was, you know? Yeah, exactly. I'd come home just before dark. That was yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Home for tea or home before it got dark. Yeah. That's fine. And yeah. then they would tell them what had happened, but they kind of knew that if anything had happened, like one of my friends would have sorted out some help. Yeah. One of my friend's parents, like... Yeah. No, it's a different, it's a different way, you know, and I, you know, and I, I don't know, is it the world's gone more dangerous or what it is, but, you know, parents have to be informed about, you know, every little thing, you know, the kids bump their head playing some game or the parents freak out straight away, you know, and I, you know, when we grew up, it wasn't like that at all. I mean, you know, it's like somebody beat me up. My dad said, well, that's life. Mm -hmm. You have to learn to defend yourself. <laughs> How are you getting on with your collages, Gabby? Uh, well, I'm, I made those two, and I'm making the last one now. Like, I'll show you. I'm almost done. What's the time? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, what it is. We're almost out of time. Yeah. I'm, I'm almost done with this. I found a picture from the Outback from Australia. Yeah. I started constructing this really delicate thing out of all of the cut up pieces like that were discarded, but it's not glued together. So I don't think I'm going to be able to share it. So I, I'll take a picture and I'll share it on Instagram. Okay. All right. Finished. So my second one is not complete yet. Okay. Maybe I could use that as well, cut out of that. So this is, um, it's, yeah, can you see all of it or? Yeah. I can, well, now you're close. We can see detail until the end of the world. Yeah. So yeah. it's basically like a collage of people walking away or sitting somewhere or contemplating, you know, like walking away um like you know where have you been yeah. until the end? you know so it's all about imaginary travel or walking away from something or yeah keeping distance or no distance yeah it's just like a collage of distance related going somewhere running 
you know, stepping. Cool. But also sitting, sitting, contemplating at the sea. Yeah, I like it. I like this one. Yeah, I do. It seems like there's a lot of narrative in it. Yeah. I'm also very much enjoying your necklace. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it's so funny because I've just realized your hair is very much like the painting behind you, or poster. <laughs> and okay. it's very it's very similar to my top, the colors. Yeah, yeah it is very similar to your yeah, top. And your mohawk too. Yeah. <laughs> your hair also is very colorful. Yeah, so... Um, what was I gonna say? Um, what do you think I should add? What do you think this adds anything to it? I really like this. Oh, this is the hand. Yeah, the hand. But I don't know. You might get a bit lost there. Yeah, and it kind of cuts up that Berlin building thing. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I think I'll I'll keep this for something else for another one. Yeah. Or so yeah, I guess we'll um take some. Are you finished yours or are you still working on yours? Um, I've just done the one, just the one with the... Uh, oh, right, yeah. The with the people and modes of... That's really nice. Yeah. Globalized, yeah. I have this one that I finished. This one I finished really quickly. Yeah. But then the second one is taking me a really long time and it's all in these kind of um, little pieces like this that... I'm sitting yeah. together and kind of using um, like map lines and rivers and kind of extending out, but it's all kind of just laid out. So I'm, I can't really show that at the minute, but when I mm -hmm. finish it, like I say, I'll share a photo of it because I am definitely going to finish it. I know I don't yeah. have time to do it here and now with you, but I will finish it and then um, share it. Okay. And that'd be cool actually if you could take photos of yours and then we... Yeah those as well can't yeah, we yeah. and then we can then um, use that as a way to tell people when we get the event up onto youtube we can share all the ones that were made yeah live, and then they can share the ones that they made because they watch sure yeah. no worries i can do that i'm just thinking one more before i leave still got 10 minutes yeah i want to use the hand for something and i'm just like <laughs> scra I'm scraping my brains here what to do what to do what's the hand is the hand holding anything or is it just reaching out it's just kind of reaching it's got a coin or something in it uh, in it i'm not really it has some like a, a piece of paper or something hmm. um maybe it could be reaching towards like a different body part yeah maybe that's what i'm looking for maybe a body oh yeah i found something a statue what kind of a background do you think for my for yours? Yeah, because if I could put it on some, I have ten minutes. I could put something. If I yeah. put it on something, then I could share it. Well, I think if you extend in the landmass and the the flow of the rivers, then there's there's definitely pieces in those magazines that could work as a as a background. Okay. More additional pieces. <laughs> yeah, oh, you see, this is the thing. I'm not, I'm not consolidating, <laughs> I'm extending. That's not the idea. You're going to be here all day. I could be here all day. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I don't know what I want. Ooh. That's kind of so, I might have found something that I can actually use. This is, it's actually pictures of people, but it has like a similar quality to the, to the lines that I'm working yeah. with. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a well. Cool. Yeah, this side, I think. Yeah. Okay. I need more, I need more table space. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I know, I found it. Go on, you can join 
in it can be a collaborative. I was just going to say, surely that either works with his arm or his leg. Mm -hmm. But like to, I would cover over him and incorporate more of the like distorted image. I think it needs the and uh, like more. It needs something here as well. You know, like to make it. You see the page? I don't like the other page. Whoa! I don't. <laughs> Maybe I could just get some color over that and keep. I see again, I think it might be nice to have some form of contrast. I'm looking for a flower, some plants. Yeah. I think this. And then something here, which will work. You can trim. I'm trimming. Oh, I'm trimming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, trimming is happening. You guys have no kids? No. Not together. I have right. a. Oh, you have, right. Yeah, I've got a daughter. She's 24. Um, she lives in the UK. She works as a police officer. Right. She's the Liverpoolian, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So she's. Uh, Hoping to hoping to get out of here at some point. Okay. Because it's been a it's been a long, long time since I've seen him. Oh, must be. Yeah, one of my friends, his kids, he's got uh, he's Australian, and his kids are in Czech Republic in Prague, and he hasn't seen them since the lockdown. Yeah. And yeah, he's finally going there this weekend. You know, and his kids are little. You know, so it's like a year and a half for little kids is a long time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things that I'm grateful for is that she is kind of older and, and yeah, and, 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 and can be online at least, you know, Zoom or WhatsApp with you, whatever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was just not possible in a short, in a small space. Oh, his face is so distracting. see what can happen when you kind of push yourself yeah I was like oh you know we're almost out of time I'll have to give up but no you've done something I, I need actually a tree I'm looking for a tree or a plant I was gonna ask you if you have found something you can <laughs> kidding That's kind of the thing that you can't replicate, isn't it? You know, when you're um, yeah. facilitating online, that yeah. sharing is um, yeah. really difficult. Yeah. 
Um, although you can share images, but you know, I don't have print or anything set up. Yeah, I guess that's the way you could do it, isn't it? You could yeah, with Zoom, I mean, you know, you can share the yeah, and then you could print it. You'd have to have all your technology. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, technology doesn't always work like that for me. Yeah. Maybe like this. Mm -hmm. Or like this. No. Not like this. Maybe this is part of this. No. Oh, yeah, I think it is. Or well, maybe it's down here. I want to cut off this at the bottom before I do anything else because I don't like that. So I've, I've got this, which is just, I just put this together just because I found a good image. Um, it's all about touching and, you know, with the hand. Yeah. Mm. Oh, nice, okay. yeah. That's come together from, all from that one image. Like I just found this and I was looking and then I was just putting everything together and I, then I found this last and that and I thought, oh, that goes really well with, you know, like this is like, you know, a goddess on a pedestal uh, looking down mm -hmm. and, you know, sort of the goddess of love maybe of d no distance. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's all about, you know, like touching and, you know, like especially um, during Corona, we haven't been able to touch or shake hands or, you know, or even, um, yeah, touch each other. Like, yeah. So it's like one of those things. Hugging so close, no distance. Touching each other. Sorry, a lorry is just getting it to reverse on outside let's shut the window um let me share with you it's not finished because i still have all of my little pieces but now i have uh, oh that looks great this background that's coming together so let me kind of zoom in a little bit so over this side i have the sea and beautiful then this is like people and then i'm bringing in the the map and the map lines and the bits that i've started working with that were cut right that's nice it's very psychedelic i love it yeah mm. cool i've still got quite a lot of pieces to stick on but uh yeah. okay, i will keep going and i will share it when it's finished yeah. okay yeah i've enjoyed this so much gabby i think me too it's been really lo lovely just to have this intimate time as well between yeah. us three it's been really lovely i mean after all the correspondence and it's nice to see you guys face to face and uh yeah i'll just take a photos of the collages and then tag you guys in it or the festival and um because you have an insta page right the laguna yeah, yeah. 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 so i'll just tag that in and yeah and uh let's see let just let's keep in touch and um you know if you ever come to berlin definitely we've got to have a beer or two yes absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, and hopefully you'll come to lanzarote too oh i love to i look you know i'm i, I love this traveling is my main thing as i said i think i have this gypsy gypsy romanian uh i know it's not a politically correct word to say wanderers wandering people um roma sinti um spirit in me um yeah I love traveling, so I'd love to visit you and maybe you can perform or do something. It would be great. We can give a collage making workshop on the island. Who knows? Yeah. Or, yeah. Performance, yeah. you know, um, spoken word, creative writing, spoken word. How do you put a spoken word piece together? Could do a lot of things. That's yeah. what I. That's what I do for a living. So you know, we would love to come over. Yeah. You know, and great. You guys, one day be good um yeah thank you so much for facilitating this and being part of this and uh you know also liking my work for it to be in the exhibition and uh it's been great yeah, yeah. thank you so much thank for your time you, it's been really all right i'll kiss you from berlin and uh i'll say goodbye and i'll keep in touch okay right. just so speak soon ciao guys have a good day ciao. Ciao, ciao. bye happy siesta <laughs> ciao ciao yeah.